All right, this is the Crunch Labs Boomerang car, and how this is supposed to work is that as the car drives forward, this worm gear drives this one, and these two arms here will gradually rotate and hit this toggle switch, which should then reverse the direction of the motor and make the car drive the other way. So it'll drive forward until one of the arm hits, toggle the switch, drive the other way, and go back and forth. My daughter just built this herself, and it is not working. It worked intermittently for a little bit and then stopped completely. I googled it and could not find any quick videos or forum posts about this, so I figured I would shoot a video of my own. So if I flip it over, you can see I have the master on switch on there, and I believe the problem is this switch, which I'll get to in a minute, but one thing you can always do if you have a project with some intermediate electronics between a battery and a motor, just to confirm that there's nothing wrong with your battery and your motor is skip whatever else is in the middle and plug the battery directly into the motor. So I can do that here by connecting the battery wires directly to the motor, again bypassing the switch, and you see when I do that it's going to turn on right away. So I know there's nothing wrong with my battery or my motor. I can also take my multimeter and hook it up directly to my battery pack. So going to the jumpers from the battery pack here. And I've already confirmed this by checking that the motor works, but this is just another way to show that I am getting voltage from the battery. So there's nothing wrong with the battery pack or the on switch for the battery pack. And I'm getting just over three volts for the battery. So the issue, I believe, I don't know if it was faulty out of the box or if my daughter broke it somehow during assembly, but I believe this switch is no longer working. So if we look at the wiring diagram they provide for the switch, you've got two wires from the battery pack that go to two wires on one side of the switch, and then the two wires on the other side of the switch go to the motor, and it describes in here somewhere this is an on-on switch, so it never actually turns anything off, it just reverses the polarity of the connection to the motor, so it's always on, but it flips the polarity and makes the motor spin the other way. But, and, sorry, the way they have this organized here is kind of convenient to help prevent kids from connecting things the wrong way. The battery pack has female connectors, and the motor has male connectors, and then the switch has one set of female and one set of male, so it's very clear that you take the male set from the switch and plug them into the female set from the battery pack and then take the female set from the switch and plug them into the male set from the motor. But again, when I do that, I would expect the motor to start spinning and either way I toggle... Oh, there we go. So you can see it wasn't working a minute ago. When I switch back in that direction, it stops. So that makes me wonder if it's actually something... Maybe my daughter pulled a little too hard on these connectors and I don't have good continuity with these connections because it should spin the other way when I toggle the switch in the other direction. Let's see. Again there you can hear the switch clicking and now it is not working at all again. So my guess is that maybe as opposed to the internals of the switch being faulty, which is pretty unlikely for such a brand new switch, that maybe she pulled or did something to make these connectors loose and I actually have a bad wire here. So another way I can demonstrate this is if I unplug the motor and again take my multimeter and connect to the output from the switch, I would expect to see either 3 volts or negative 3 volts from the battery pack depending on the polarity here, but you can see I am getting zero. So I'm going to reach under there, toggle the switch, I am getting, oh, there we go. So something happens to be jostled into exactly the right position right now. So I'm getting the negative 3 volts. If I switch back, I get 0, though. I would expect positive 3, which is interesting because, again, if it wasn't a loose wire, or sorry, if the wires were not loose right now, if I have all the wires in exactly the right place, oh, there I switch back and get 0 again. So something is definitely loose here. So if you are doing this project and... Hold on, my wife is yelling for me in the background. All right, I tried to get 10 minutes to myself to do this, but if you also have two small children, you know how that goes. Anyway, now I'm trying to remember what I was doing. Okay, so my guess is that maybe when she was putting this together, she made some of these connectors loose, 
and in the process of jiggling things around here I need to get them in exactly the right position. Again, I'm trying to finagle things so I can actually get a voltage reading, but I'm getting nothing. So what I will probably do, um, since I have a soldering iron, is just snip all of these connectors off and solder the whole thing. Um, but if this is not working for you, I guess that is something to look out for. If you had a child assemble this by themselves and they um, were a little rough with the wires and you have a multimeter handy, you can kind of check and see if you're getting voltage output from the switch. Another thing, and if you get the screaming in the background, that's my kids. Another way I could test this is measuring continuity across the switch instead of measuring voltage. So I don't know, have a wiring diagram or know exactly how this guy is wired, but in theory, if I connect to one of the female wires on one side and then connect my other alligator clip to one of the male wires on the other side, oh, there we go. So you can see I am getting continuity there, but if I toggle, okay, so now that's working. And if I check the other one, I would expect that to be reversed. So in here, I'm gonna have continuity, or I did. Let's try this, toggle. So now I'm not getting it anymore. So again, my hunch is that something is loose in the connectors probably to the switch. I am going to fix that probably just by snipping these off and soldering them. So I kind of got into my end narration a little too prematurely there. As you can see, I cut off the connectors, soldered, and then um, heat shrink tubinged these. But I am still having the same intermittent behavior where the battery pack is on, but... Usually the wheels do not spin unless I just kind of happen to have the thing in exactly the right position and then occasionally it will work. So what I decided to do now that I have soldered over all those pins and can't measure them as easily is just take the probes of my multimeter and poke through the hot glue on the switch itself here to see if I'm getting voltage. So if I poke through, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see the multimeter screen. Again, there's some hot glue over the solder connections on the back of the little switchboard here. And if I can get, there we go. Through the hot glue, down to the solder tabs, you see I am getting three volts from the battery. But then if I move over to the output side, I am not getting anything. Even if I press down there real hard to make sure I'm kind of getting through the hot glue, to the underlying solder, I'm not getting anything. So I think that means that the switch itself might actually be defective. I don't know if, and there's this little, I can also kind of access from the side rather than having to press down through the glue. Looks like I could get a multimeter probe into the side there to take those readings as well. So let's try that. This might get a little, Tight, but again, if I go into the sides, uh, now my hand's blocking the camera. Sorry, this is kind of awkward to do and film at the same time, so I might give up filming this part. But again, it looks like there's multiple places you can measure voltage to confirm that this switch is actually working. And what I'm seeing might indicate that the switch itself is actually broken somehow. So I guess I will email Crunch Labs and see if they will replace it or maybe look at the part number here on the side and see if I can just go online and order one. But again, if you have experienced this problem or something similar, leave a comment and let everybody else watching this video know. Thank you.